Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at another fancy VFR airspace. Uh, this one is called a Special Flight Rules Area. Uh, what does that mean? Well, let's uh, go ahead and take a look. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be saying hello to lovely New York City and low frame rates as we come cruising along this very, very interesting Special Flight Rules Area. Now the way this works is it's designed to get us underneath Class Bravo airspace and then afterwards, it's supposed to get us all the way around the lovely Statue of Liberty, say hello to this little bridge, and basically do a big racetrack pattern. Now, one of the things I love about this particular one, I've flown this one in the real world. Uh, everybody takes the same picture, by the way. You'll know it when we cross it, because you'll be like, hey, I've seen that picture before. Basically, this entire zone exists completely underneath the big nasty airspace above us. Now, we've seen a couple examples of these already. What makes this one unique is the fact that it punches a really, really tall slot out of this, allowing, you know, people like us to tourists to come sneak through the whole entire uh, zone here and this is basically you got yourself you know a little east river west river you got yourself uh, the hudson river and all those other kind of things all pfft. there's no west river by the way i just made that up but it allows us to get in here without disturbing all everybody here there's a couple of weird funky rules uh, when we do use this particular airspace by the way and by funky rules um these are the funky rules so the way this works in the real world and again this is pretty wild is what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be inside of this airspace which is low by the way in case you didn't notice, the cutoff point is tremendously, tremendously low. And again, we want to try to stay underneath these altitudes here. We need to get to less than 1,300 feet, which uh, makes this flight uh, very, very exciting if you've never done this one before. So a couple different things they give us warnings of. Uh, one thing they always say is, first of all, you've got to make sure your lights are on. You're supposed to use your landing lights. Uh, you can't go past 140 knots, which is why we have the 172 today. Another thing what it wants us to do is it wants us to hug the entire shoreline the whole way down. Now, you'll notice here this is a plan for altitude a thousand feet but be careful not running into the things above us now the interesting thing here is they're basically trapping us at between 1000 and 1300 feet i'm a big fan of 1100 feet but man 1100 feet you got to be precise the other thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to communicate along this entire flight identifying all these mandatory points. Well, what are the mandatory points? Well, the first one's Alpine Tower. We're supposed to go ahead and call that one up and say, hey, Alpine Tower. Coming down here, uh, when we cross the GWB, which trust me, um, you can see by this little icon here, it looks like this double bridge. You're going to know that bridge when you cross it. Next, what we do is we announce when we get to the Intrepid. The Intrepid's incredibly obvious in the real world, not so much in flight sim. Then what we're supposed to do here is obviously you have these two towers, which are neat. You have the clock. Oh, you can't miss it. Again, it's right there on your right. You can't miss it. We say hi to the Statue of Liberty. Then we're supposed to come down here, pass by the Verenzano Bridge, and then we're supposed to come back up this way. Now, the cool thing is we can actually break off this at Governor's Island if we want to land in downtown Manhattan at Wall Street, you know, if you're like a wealthy stockbroker or something like that. We actually can sneak all the way up here to Roosevelt Island and then come back around if we wanted to. To. Again, this to me is a helicopter flight for another day. But um, again, we'll go pop down this one. So what are we going to do? So what we're going to do is let me go ahead and expand this a little bit so you can see it a little better. <laughs> was that useless or was that useless? So what we're going to do, oh my God, that's not even more helpful here, is we're going to take off from HPN. Uh, HPN is right up in this Westchester County. And we're going to take off from HPN and we're basically going to proceed direct over to this particular position here. And then we're going to enter into this corridor. We're going to go around the Statue of Liberty. Now, normally what you do is you come back up and around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically pop up this side and we're going to come and land up here in LaGuardia. Again, we're going to break every rule in the universe as we do this, but at the very least, you're able to see this special VFR corridor in action. So let's go pop back over to the simulator and uh, let's do it to it, as I like to say here. All right, ready to go. Vroom. Oh man, it feels weird flying a 172. <laughs> Been flying all these uh, flash planes uh, recently, so getting into this thing is like, hmm, where on earth are we going? So HPN is a pretty cool airport. Now, my fun story about HPN, of course, is uh, when I flew into here one time, I was flying out of Hartford. I needed a place that was 50 miles away from Hartford to land. Uh, one of the things you'll find out uh, when you're working on your own pilot's licenses is you're desperately trying to accumulate as much cross-country time as you possibly can. Uh, the reason being is uh, cross-country time equals uh, getting you closer to your IFR certification because you need a ton of cross-country time before they even let you jokingly pursue your IFR certification. So what we do here is uh, we always try to go at least 50 miles away from where you take off from. And obviously in the flight sim, it's your selection. What the heck happened there? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, um, Nintendo 64. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I'm continuing north, blah, 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 blah. All right, so let's go ahead and cross over this uh, lovely river. I always remember uh, traveling down to New York City and coming down this way and being like, oh, hello. And like, you always pass right there. Like, that's like a, literally the highway's right there. But you can always see the river and every once in a while, the airplane goes right over your head, right where I'm passing over right now, which I'm sure they're uh, not too much of a fan of here. Okay, let's do it. So, uh, one, two, three. <laughs> 
So we're just going to proceed like uh, we're flying normally here. I don't want to get that high up. Obviously, we don't want to get that high up on account of the fact that we're not supposed to be greater than 1,300 feet. We want to be really, really mindful of the airspaces here. Oh, man, this is hard to fly like this. There we go. I'm going to push his nose down. I'm going to kind of swing around this way a little bit. There we go. Like I said, I want to kind of get us all nice and lined up for our little Hudson corridor here. Choo, 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 choo. Gonna go fast, gonna go fast. Yum, yum, yum. There we are. Cross over the Hudson River now. Getting a little fast. And go left, left, left. And let's go ahead and get ourselves nice and lined up for this operation. Okay, so there's the Palisades. Can't miss that. Now, one of the interesting things is there's a little place up there that uh, you can go get yourself on. I always call them road brownies. They're like, you know, like the big, thick, like way too fudgy brownies that you can buy. And uh, what makes them really, really interesting is the fact that uh, not only are they like, you know, big and thick, but they always like put like walnuts and stuff on top of them. But there's kind of a nice spot right there for those of you. Actually, can I even see it? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> right there. Ah. Turns out uh, my memory of these places is not as worse as I thought it was. Anyway, let's go back to work here. So what we're about to do is we're about to cross into this special VFR rule zone. Uh, if you remember, we're supposed to be altitudes between 1,000 and 1,300 feet, and we're supposed to basically hug this wall here. And we're also, of course, uh, keep in mind that we're supposed to self-announce as we go. So we're basically going to scoot scoot here. Uh, there's other special VFR zones as well throughout the United States. Uh, one of the most famous ones, of course, is uh, when you get down to uh, Washington, D.C. Apparently, they don't like intruders. I don't know what the deal with that is. I think they're just being impersonal, but that's okay. So um, what they do is you have to go with a special gateway, and you have to enter a special flight plan and everything under the sun to basically get yourself in and out of there. It would not surprise me if you require some kind of, you know, like congressional note or something like that to fly your plane there. It is what it is, though, and obviously, national security. All right, there's my 1,100 feet. I'll give myself a little bit of trim here. Whoa, whoa, hey -oh. whoa, whoopsie daisies. I really, really, really wish the good folks over at uh, Flight Sim would go ahead and adjust the trim so it behaves like an actual airplane trim. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to do heading hold. Again, I'm going to keep this nice and steady, and now we're just going to go, like I said, 1,100 feet is kind of the magic speed. So let's go ahead and take a look back at our special uh, SFRA is what they call it. Let me go ahead and grab this one. Foop. I'm going to go pop that back up on the screen so you can see exactly what we're doing here. So as you can see, our first point is going to be what they call the Alpine Tower, which is going to be this little uh, sweetie swoop uh, right up here. And then from there, we're going to pass by the GWB and sort of uh, slowly make our way down this river itself. Now, the thing I love about this particular flight here is, you know, you've got Mount Vernon over on your right and everything like that. It's like there's, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff going on here. But that's basically all there is to this particular zone. Now, what's going to happen is, as you can see very clearly on my chart, we just crossed Alpine. So Alpine right there. Oh, you're never going to be able to see it. The Alpine Tower would have been right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hug the right side of this river as aggressively as we can. I'm going to zoom in. I feel like we're playing like, you know, X-Wing or something like that from uh, way back in the 90s. And one of the activities is you had this like 3D little adventure where you'd basically fly through these pipes. And inside of those pipes, like, were little, like people would shoot at you and like you have to like not run into the ceiling. That kind of reminds me of this a little bit. Okay, so we're going to swing to the right. Um, our next waypoint here, which is uh, very clearly visible. Oh, again, we just passed the Alpine Towers. So we're going to be smacking into the GWB. This is when we're going to be announcing that we're crossing into that particular position on the east side. Oh, the west side, sorry. We are on the west side. We're going south. And again, the whole point here is to make ourselves uh, known where we are. And again, you'll see the photograph that everybody takes in about two seconds here. Um, I think the GW Bridge is... Uh, they've got a big tarp over it because right now they're doing a bunch of maintenance on it. So uh, it doesn't cause any issues to things being dropped on people's heads. But again, not too bad. I'll go ahead and cheat a little bit here. And we want to keep a very close eye on our position. Remember, there's people coming up the other side. So as we do this, well, we have to be very, very mindful of it. Crossing directly over this. You can't miss it. It's good old-fashioned uh, Route 1. Now we'd make our announcement saying we're crossing this at this altitude. And we're about to get yelled at about a hundred different times. So again, as long as we stay inside of this extreme, it's like, look at this. It's like flying through a canyon. That's great. Like I say, we are still technically legal here. We have not broken anybody's airspace today, which is actually quite an achievement. And all we do is we just hang out just like this. Again, I'm using my heading hold to make my life a little bit simpler today. This is pretty cool, though. So now, when, earlier I was mentioning uh, what picture that everybody takes here. Let me slow down just a little bit here. And let me go grab my special VFR chart. Double check where my next position. Whoa, don't do that. Our next position will be, uh, let's see, here, the Intrepid. So the Intrepid should be very obvious. Uh, we didn't miss the Intrepid, did we? <laughs> of course, in the real world, the Intrepid is very obvious. In the flight sim, the Intrepid is a little less than obvious. 
Well, I see carnivals here. I don't see the Intrepid anywhere, though. That's a little bothersome. Um, somebody call up the good folks over at Flight Sim and let them know we're missing a key waypoint that we need for this flight. Uh-oh. I'm also drifting far, far too to the center here. Again, remember, this airplane's coming this way, and you watch them go by you like this so when you're flying this. Anyway, a few moments ago, I was talking about uh, the picture everybody takes. So let's go ahead and get that picture that everybody takes, and let's take that picture. <laughs> Look at the smokestacks. Love it. And let's see here. Which one do we want? Do we want this one, or do we want that one? All right, all right there cool so that's the picture everybody takes when they go along this flight so again we're still technically underneath the airspace of the stuff above us so we start getting to the interesting part in just a moment here a couple taps of sped up time here we're gonna go swing to the left a little bit and you can see we almost nipped that corner there when we took this one but that's okay we're gonna just sneak by perfect so let's go take a look at our chart real fast all right, taking a quick peek here, you can see our next point that we're going to be interested in is going to be the Statue of Liberty. We should be passing by the tunnels at some point, though. Usually they're pretty obvious. Let's take a look here. Oh, Hello. There they are. So you can see how that's where the little tunnel goes right underneath there. And obviously you've got the Freedom Tower sitting right there, and there is our lovely Statue of Liberty. So now the interesting thing here with this part of this flight is, you know, everybody likes to take that picture too. And again, our limit is still 1,300 feet. Theoretically, we can go a little bit lower. It actually warns that there are a serious number of air tour operators at 500 feet around the vicinity. So for us, this is actually a safe altitude. I'm going to shut off the automatic pilot real quick. We could technically go significantly lower here if we want to get a nice picture. But really Remember, everybody and their tour guide operator is going to be doing the same exact thing as uh, we're doing right now. So you have to be tremendously careful. At least the traffic is going in the same direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm speed up just a little bit here. One, two, three. Look out the window. I'm going to go wave to Lady Liberty there. Hello. Nice. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and set ourselves up to go ahead and land the airplane. And again, remember, we're still in this special visual flight rules. Now, the Verenzano, which is way, 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 way down there. That's that guy chilling kind of towards the end. That would be the last announcing waypoint. And of course, we can pop all the way down there if we wanted. But like I said, we're actually going to come around and we're going to come sneak up the uh, Easter River here so that we have the ability to go pop over to uh, the, some of the airports over on that side of things. And again, we're basically going to be going up the East River until the Terminus here. And uh, obviously, the Guardia has got its own airspace and everything like that. I'm going to lose a little bit of altitude. Pull that nose up just a bit. And it's looking pretty good, actually. Again, we're still within that corridor here, believe it or not. And that gives you an idea of how incredibly crowded and tight this uh, would be in the real world. Of course, you can see the big old ship just chilling there. How you doing, Chief? And look at how tiny the East River is. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said this would be easy. So what they do now is uh, they always give you a quick little warning that they say, hey, just so you know, you're going to be entering into an area where it's incredibly busy. And again, everybody and their expensive helicopter, if you take a look right where my mouse is here, there's actually a helipad here. They don't simulate this in-flight sim, but you can actually come out here and um, yeah, this is where you'd be landing your helicopter. This is much more a zone for helicopters than it is for big, scary airplanes like this. But again, we can still follow the corridor and safely go through this without having talked to anybody other than the fact that we have to self-announce our current positions and everything like that. Come swing around here and get a really, really good look at downtown. Again, it's really, really neat that they took the time to model all this very, very carefully here. Um, of course, as we're cruising along, uh, there are no more self-reported points here along this part of the flight. At this point, you basically going to scoot all the way through until uh, we go pop by uh, LaGuardia. Again, this is meant for helicopters on this side of things. It's not to say we can't do it. It's just to say that, look around. Look at how incredibly dangerous this would be. Like, you know, here I'm at 700 feet passing over this bridge. Just imagine how confident the uh, people come in the other direction direction are going to feel when they see us at the 172 ripping along here like this. And I'm actually sort of surprised. The frame rates are pretty good today. So anyway, uh, like I said, I just wanted to take a couple moments to show you another one of these fancy VFR airspaces. This is a special one. They're actually spread throughout the United States. There's a bunch of different types. Uh, there are military style ones. You also have ones that basically allow you to kind of get around and through things. Basically, the whole purpose of the one that we just flew now is for the purposes of kind of bypassing all the insanity. People love flying down here. In the real world, you have to use a tremendous amount of caution because literally everybody in their helicopter is going to be basically, well, that guy's floating, doing absolutely no speed at all through these particular regions, making it tremendously dangerous for you to be cruising along through. So you want to be very, very, very mindful of that. And again, you get to see both sides of New York without actually annoying anybody in New York, except, you know, the people who happen to live right next to there. All right, let's go pop up and I'll uh, put this plane on the ground and we'll call it a video. 
Let's see here. Oh, there's a water route right there. That seems kind of interesting. I don't think I'm going to land on that, though. And the Guardia is going to be right over there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. See Daisy. Woohoo! Violating airspace. Violating airspace. Launch nuclear weapons. Launch nuclear weapons. Okay, let's head over to LaGuardia. And there's LaGuardia. <laughs> Honestly, of the two airports, I prefer LaGuardia to JFK, like 10 to 1. Um, LaGuardia is just easy. Like, it's not a difficult airport. It has an amazing, amazing RNAV to approach it to actually get you on the ground here. Uh, definitely highly recommended for uh, those of you who are looking for an interesting approach to the city. Uh, the RNAV that takes you in to land on this particular place, uh, one thing I really, really love about it is the fact that it's actually going to take you along the river and then it turns you over. And basically, you're going to be flying all over these annoying traffics like us who are just uh, kind of cruising along. Let me pull that nose up here. Go up to go down. There we go. That'll slow us down nicely. So like I was saying, uh, the RNAV that takes you in here is really, really cool. Obviously, ILSs don't go around corners, but RNAVs can go around corners all afternoon. So what makes this one so incredibly cool is the fact that you basically get to see all of New York on the approach. There's another RNAV just like that flying into DCA, which is uh, Washington, D.C.'s airport. That's uh, Ronald, um, is it Ronald Reagan. I don't remember. I'd have to go look it up again. But passing into that one's super cool. Gets you get to see the entire, basically, the uh, nation's capital. You get to see all the landmarks. And then you just go clunk, clunk, clunk on this really, really, really teeny tiny runway that exists in the opposite side of everything so it's, it's kind of neat for those of you looking for an interesting challenge oh my gosh look at those taxiways <laughs> i like how they've got the yellow bars the enhanced uh, please don't drive your airplanes on these because you're going to break my air you're going to damage the ground platforms release i love it when you do that you let go of the thing and then you just kind of sit here fun game to play of course is how long can you stay in the air before the plane stops flying that's 50 that's 57 still flying still flying 51 Nose is up. 47. This plane would never stay this airborne this long. It would just suddenly drop out from an easy 40 knots. 36 knots. Ugh. All right, we'll land. <laughs> Other than that, enjoy.